Hello and welcome back. This is Sherry with Heart and Soulful. I am in the studio today. Yeah, if you've been following along, thank you for sticking by me. I know I've been kind of hit and miss here, jumping around. Um, if you're brand new to my channel, welcome. I hope if you enjoy this video that you will give me a thumbs up and click on subscribe so that you don't miss out on anything. I did have a recent comment where someone was not getting notifications of my videos and I don't know if that's true or not because I hadn't done a few and then all of a sudden I did so maybe she thought she was missing things but there's a little bell and if you click that bell then you've not only subscribed but you are also going to get notifications when I do post a new video. So I have been working on several different projects. I tend to have multiple things going at a time because for me uh, this whole channel started because I just love being creative and then sharing what I learn or just what I've been working on with my Facebook page and to do that the best thing to do was to have a YouTube channel so I've been like I said doing lots of different projects and um, this is one of them and I promised in my last video I would work on this this week and I do intend to but I have so many different things going right now, and this is kind of more of an art journal, I would call it. Um, it's an altered book. It's called, uh, the series is called Use Your Wings. I can put a link down below in case you haven't seen any of it. But each, each spread is kind of a different theme. It's all full of pockets and writing space and little fun, you know, mechanical parts and things. Uh, but to me, when I do one of these spreads, I want to really be focused on this and have an idea and let it kind of consume me and I don't feel like that right now on this particular book so as soon as I do I will work on it and post something. Uh, in the meantime I'm work also working on uh, volume two of my Bodhi journal. This is volume one and I have started volume two. Um, I'm just going to show something real quick and here's why I have it pulled out and uh, so that those are kind of simultaneous you know things that I'm working on. But in the meantime, I also started spring cleaning. I had been gone for a while again, and when I came back, um, I had had to leave unexpectedly. My room was a mess, and I walked in the door and just kind of like, you know, threw my hands up. Like, I, I can't even feel creative right now. I need to reorganize a little bit and clean up. So it got me, I thought, it's spring. I'm going to start going through stuff, getting rid of things I don't need, reorganizing and making it more efficient so that I can feel more creative when I walk in the door. So... When I did that, I started finding things that I, you know, old books that I had bought that I was going to tear up and never had done it and all that kind of stuff. So I, I made myself stop and I, I make myself every day have, you know, some little reorganization or cleaning time, uh, maybe listing something in my Etsy shop that needs to get out of here. Uh, and I'm going to try to keep doing that just so that I keep moving forward on those things. But it also got me to, you know, I'd pick up a project, pick up something and, and think, oh, where was I when I did that? And I need to finish it. I want to just finish something. So I had um, a bunch of old books that I was going to rearrange and move from where they were located. So I grabbed all my book parts. I had already had a bunch of books where I had taken them apart. So I just had front and back cover. Some of them I only have one cover because back in my other life of crafting I was using old books for other things and so maybe I only have the front or only the back so I've got to figure out some you know ways to use all that, those things so I grabbed one that I wanted to work on and it's been really hard for me uh, to take apart really old things because I just love them but I decided I just need to I wanted a uh, more variety of papers to use in my projects so I need to just start with the ones that are already falling apart and that way also I can put bundles together of just different papers and share them with other people. I'm never going to use all of everything. So this was one that I took apart that I just loved. Um, and it took me, it was kind of that, you know, jumping in the deep end of the pool. Um, but I took the book apart and I love taking things apart because then you can see how they went together and just how people did things, you know, back in 1881. And it, this was all stitched together, and I just loved when I took them apart, um, you know, pulling off the spine, I found out that, you know, they had just used recycled paper in the, in the inside to reinforce that too. I'm saving all these parts because I think they're going to be great, and I'll, I'm going to use one today, I think. 
I think they're going to be great for, um, you know, collaging and, and that sort of thing. So save all those little parts. I just love, I love the grunginess of them. And I just want to use every little bit. So I'm saving all that. Um, like I said, I may put some packets together where I keep some and I, I share some with you. But this is um, the Elocutionist. And it's kind of like little uh, mini publications. And then they were all bound together. They went from July 1881, um, volume one, number one, all the way to number 11, uh, May of 1882. So, you know, I just, that was just a kind of a fun thing. So I've taken the cover apart. It was pretty wonky. Um, and actually this was not, when I started this project, I kind of had an epic fail. And so I'm going to share that with you too, because that is kind of why I have this channel to be a beginner, to always keep in my mind. I'm a beginner. I'm learning new things. I want to share my mistakes so that, uh, number one, if you're just starting out, you'll see what I did right or wrong. And number two, if you're experienced, you can share with me, um, another idea. So this book actually was going to start out with this old Webster dictionary cover. This one, uh, I think that's what this spine came off of. It was already missing its fabric part of its spine, and it was kind of just like this. And I thought, well, I've got a whole bunch of dictionaries. I've been kind of tearing pages and things out of this one already anyway. I might as well just take it apart so I can use the cover. Um, the other thing that I had found in my cleaning was that I had a whole bunch of uh, wallpaper in a wallpaper book. I've already tossed the cover because it's just it was huge and in my way. But I have saved um, all the pages. I'll show you real quick. I had bought this years and years ago when I did other things. And I'm, I'm tempted now that this is all I have left to go to a local paint or wallpaper store and see if they give away any of their old sample books. So I'm actually even saving these are nice thick pages that have, um, you know, show it in a room. And I'm saving these because they're thick. And they're large, so they'll make some nice, um, you know, booklets and things too. So I've saved all of those, and those will go. I recently purchased a big atlas too, and I just watched a video this morning um, from Eva at Bohemian Crafting. She had done one a long time ago that I had watched about using atlas pages, and now she just did another one like today or yesterday. So it was like, oh, perfect timing. So you can actually, you know, use these large pieces. So I've left some large, and then I cut some down to fit this book cover. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna start with these wallpaper pages. And I love that they would have, you know, the big pattern on one side, the wallpaper, but then on the back sides, they would have a little section that showed you the whole full pattern so that you could see what it would look like, you know, on the whole wall. And those were all done in like, I'm not going to, in black and white, but it's really kind of a dark gray and white. And so I just loved that those would be on my back side of my pages. So I, I cut a, those up, a whole bunch of them for this cover. And then I had also recently watched a video and I don't remember who, who it was from. I watched it on my phone and I, I don't remember, but, um, I'll try to find it. And it was somebody I had never watched before, but I was looking up, um, I think, open spine book covers or hinged book covers, that kind of thing, to see if I can, what what different options I had to, to do a spineless book. And so I've seen a few different things. And like I said, this one was for making these hinges and it reminded me that I had seen someone else do it before and I thought oh I haven't tried that really I mean I kind of did it in my own different way um, just adding one page to a book with these little hinges but this was binding the entire book using this hinge method so I thought okay I want to do the wallpapers but I need something else to go with them I'll, I'll grab some different book pages and then the other thing that I had uh, pulled out was um, as I was cleaning my files up, all my digitals that I have created, I wanted to get those all organized in files. And I found where when I first bought my new printer, I was trying to print out my digitals and I was having problems. If you've watched some recent videos, you know that. So I was trying to print out my own dig digitals on my new printer, which I ended up having to replace. It wasn't me, it was a lemon. 
And in that process of trying to figure my printer out, I bought a digital kit from um, Rachel at Roxy Creations. I absolutely love this kit. And I hadn't done anything with it yet, but I remembered that I had bought it and I had printed some on um, a tea stained paper and coffee stained paper. And so I had those all printed out already and I thought, I just need to start using some of this stuff, you know, that I have done. So I thought, because they all had kind of a, a old world look to them that they would look good with that wallpaper. Um, this one, I think it's called French Chateau 2, which must mean there's a French Chateau 1 and I'm gonna have to go find it, but, um, cause I just, I just love these. So I will put a link down below for, for this kit for her. Uh, that I ended up using. So I, I, I got all my pages together that I wanted to use. So they were all cut like this. They were not doubled so that I could fold them and sew them in. They were all single pieces this size. And, you know, book pages are that way most of the time. You know, even if they were together, they may be fragile and come apart before you can get them sewn in again. So you have all those things and you want to use them and you don't want to maybe fold them this way. So you, you can, you know, to have different sizes or whatever. But I, I kind of just wanted to play around with how would I bind a book together with just single pieces like that. So the Epic Fell, and I shouldn't call it that. It was for me just because I felt like I spent a lot of time on it and then I didn't like it at all. So I had to totally redo it, which caused a whole other problem. So I'm going to show you the basics of the hinge thing if you haven't seen it. So when I started, um, the, even the hinge idea, the, the one that I saw, the video I saw, she was using fabric and she was using, she was just cutting like little fabric squares that would go like this and gluing them on. Um, I think she had mentioned that there's a fabric tape. Um, and if it's like book binding tape, that would have been really hard to work with because it would be so tacky sticky that there would be no forgiving, removing, or anything if you got something in the wrong spot. Um, so she was actually gluing each one down, and that would have taken a long time too. So I thought, how can I speed that process up and maybe not use fabric or use fabric, either one. So I thought, I'm going to design something on my Cricut. So I did. I designed these little hinges, and I'll show you the white side just because you can see it a little bit better. And it just has a little scallop thing. It's nothing too fancy. But I ended up making them, um, I think these are one inch by, they're one inch high by, well, from the point of the scallop to the point of the scallop is also an inch. So about a one inch square. I think if I would have made them a little bit larger, that might have helped my problem because I would have covered most of my page if they were bigger. So that was my first kind of thing as I made them small. Um, the first time I did them, I did them on white sticker paper because I thought, well, then I just peel them off and stick them on. They'll, that'll be quicker. Um, so if I would have made them larger, I think that would have helped. Then when I had done them on white, I didn't want them to be bright white. So I was using my vintage photo to distress each one, which was taking forever. And then I thought, well, silly me, I should have either distressed my whole paper before I cut them out, or what would be really cool was if I cut them out of some kind of printed paper, book page, could have been anything. I decided since I was using these really um, wonderful, colorful, um, papers from from Rachel that I would use one of those papers and just cut them out out of that that way they'll all kind of be in the color palette I don't care what's really on them you know it, it just looks like I'm recycling something um, but they kind of go and I, I kind of like that because then it adds you know a color to a, a blank piece of paper but like I said you could use anything so I still have this pattern I can scale it up if I need to on a future thing I'm saving these because I may you know use them for something else um, but I did the entire book like that this one I had finished it and everything and then I didn't like it so I'm going to show you how the how you put them on and then I'll show you how I corrected my problem so you have two pieces of paper well there's three because we need three 
to, just to show you how this goes. So I will use these because I already have them made and then you can see how my issue came to be. So I had scored these, folded them in half and they are a sticker. So what you wanna do is you're gonna start and you're gonna end up putting three hinges on one side, okay? And so I'm gonna do that. And the hardest thing is getting these little things apart. I tried using less, um, if, you, if you have a Cricut, you'll know what I mean. When you, when you do your, um, I'm just eye, eyeballing these. When you do the Cricut, you can have it the, the how hard, how firm it cuts to like default or more or less. I did it with um, the sticker paper setting and the first time, and it cut all the way through the front and the back. It would be nice if it just cut through the front so that the, the stickers would have stayed to the backing and then it would have been easier to peel them off, you know, to peel these off the backing. So then the next time I printed it, I did it with less, I forget what the word is they use, but anyway, I did it less pressure and it still cut all the way through. So I don't know if someone has a trick about that, but I could have, I guess, done it. It seemed like when I was making puzzle, I was doing this once before and now I just don't remember what the setting I used was. I guess I should have written it down, but I think if you don't use sticker setting, you just use like regular paper setting, then it will cut through just that top layer and not through um, the backing, the sticker backing. So I'll have to try that again because that, that to me would make it easier. You wouldn't have, you know, all these little pieces. Okay, so you have this first page, okay? And then these are kind of gonna kind of stick, but I don't care, okay? And then, so the next page, you're gonna do, you're gonna alternate. I'll leave these so I guess I can see them. So this page, I wanna put them in between these two. So I may have been doing this all wrong. Um, so I'm gonna do two more. I should just be doing this with tape. Then I'm not wasting these little stickers. I think I will just to save time. I don't need to use these since this is just showing you what I did wrong. Okay, I'm just gonna use some tape just for demo purposes. Okay, so for this one then you would go, and I'm only, I'm not gonna attach it to that page. I'm just eyeballing it. So it would be in, be, in between those other two. So I think if I had if I had made these wider, you know, maybe measured, maybe marked on my pages exactly where they needed to go so that I didn't run one into the other, but most of my hinge was covered. I think that would have maybe solved my problem. I will try that again just to see. Okay, but then what you do, I can pull this up, is this page is gonna go to this page, right? So then I'm gonna take these first three and fold them over this page. Okay, so now these are two, these two are hinged together, and then I still have these two from this second page that's gonna go to the third page. So here's my third page. And on this page, I need the three again. So I'm gonna go totally crooked here. One, two. Now, if you like, you want to line them. If you care, if you want them all wonky, it doesn't matter. You can just eyeball and not have them be perfect. If you want them to line up, because you are going to see though this one and this one together, then I kind of really made sure that this was going to be right across from the other one, and then it would look like one continuous hinge. So now this one, it's all stuck to my table with this really brittle paper that I already ripped off, but you'll get the idea. So this one, I'm gonna put these 
let's see, this way, this way, this way together, like where it goes. And then I'm doing the two from the previous page over this page, okay? And now my next page, I'm gonna put two in between, lay it over and attach it from these three, with these three, okay? So I don't know if I have enough done that you can see what happened to mine, but you know, they stay together, okay? These were pretty fragile and I'm just using, you know, I'm not being very careful. But when you had a whole bunch of these, I ended up, it, um, it ended up kind of being like this big accordion deal. You see how those pull apart like an accordion? And I have them tight all the way. So I'm thinking it's because I needed my pieces to be longer, okay? So I think that'll solve it. I'll do it again on some smaller project just to try it out and I will do a video then. But that's what I did. I didn't like it because it. I knew I wanted to keep my spine open and I didn't want it to, I didn't want my two covers to kind of go like this and then my spine is all pulling apart, you know? So I didn't know what to do. You know, I had already cut everything. I had already made all those. I had put them together. It took me probably a day and a half with all the other stuff I was doing um, to get it done. So I had to take all those little stickers off. Some of these pages were really fragile. So I went ahead and took them off of everything and wherever I wasn't gonna be able to cover it up again, I just trimmed everything down to fit this smaller book cover. So that's where I'm at. Um, I've taken them apart and now I'll show you what I did to put them together. I, um, I decided I just really wanted them to be sturdy and have tape across the whole thing. So I took my first page, which was the picture of uh, Webster. I was using his dictionary, and so I thought it would have been fun to have his picture in the front. So I I decided since I had, had made um, all the uh, tabs out of these papers that it'd be fun to make kind of like washi tape, make your own washi tape out of the papers too. So I printed some on sticker paper and then just cut one inch strips but then I also did some just on uh, paper I had already printed. I had some that I guess when I was doing my test prints, I had some just on cheaper paper. So I used those two because I already printed them. I went ahead and cut them into one inch strips. And then I used my Xyron that I've shown before. I've shown this many times before. This is a really old one. They still make them. They just look a little different design. Um, this one's the two and a half inch. They make up to a five inch and it's just a creative sticker. So you put whatever paper ribbon, whatever you want in here, crank it and it comes out as a sticker. And so I'll put a link below for, for that. Also, uh, one of my favorite tools, it just makes it quicker. You can use glue stick or glue them on too. either way. Um, I was just trying to do something that would be a little faster to put together. Uh, so I have some, like I said, on sticker. So I, I just chose my one inch strips. These, I had some extras. Um, these, I had just copied a, um, a page, a front cover out of a music book and, and just used some of those too. So I just had all my strips, my, they're one inch wide. And I just, um, I went ahead and scored them and folded them in half. Like I'll show you on this one, just because. I think it, um, especially with thinner book page, like this one, um, there are some thinner papers that I used from one of the other books that I took apart. It's kind of thin paper. Uh, if you don't get it on there nice and flat and it's, there's any ripples, they just don't lay nice. So I take this, as, this is one with sticker backing, and I found using my scoreboard just to kind of make it easier. I had a hard time uh, with my little rec recollections. This one also has a scoring, but because they're only one inch wide, I had a real hard time keeping it straight in there um, because it ends up under this plastic thing to get it in the middle and to keep that all holding without it moving. So I found that this one was worked better. So I just go to the half inch and make a little score mark. And it makes kind of a wide, um, a wider 
little uh, score than the other one. That's why I started with the other one to try to use. Because what happens is then when you go to fold it over, it might, you know, it might be half at one end, but it might wander because that little score mark was so wide. So you still kind of have to guide it, especially when it's on sticker paper like this because it's a little thicker. The, the thinner, just plain paper was actually easier. But I found that it was really good to go ahead and get these as flat, even if they're, I'll show you here in a second. Even if it wandered, you know, and it, you see that little edge and then it kind of, there's a little more here. Even if it wandered like that, if you get it nice and flat, then when you put it on your paper, it will all be flat. Because what happens is if you have it ripply anywhere, any one page, it's going to throw the whole book off. You know, it's kind of like that. The first one's just a little bit. The next one's a little bit more. Next thing you know, um, all your pages are kind of off and ripply and not, not as nice and flat as that. Um, that was the other thing when I did the hinged thing. It just, I felt like every time I added a hinge, my pages were moving, moving, moving. You could kind of, you know, flatten it all out and get it all lined up more. But it was kind of all going at a little angle too. So I don't know, you know, I, like I said, if I had done the, the the things wider, that probably would have helped a lot. So I'm gonna do one, I think, just to show you. Let's see. I'm gonna find two pages I don't care about so much. This paper's really brittle, so I end up having to use it mostly for collage kind of thing. So then when you have it like this, you can just, I found it easier when it was on sticker paper to just do one side at a time. That was the other kind of handy thing about sticker paper. If you glued it, you know, you just, you can get a rhythm of how you do things, you know, if you just kind of find the easiest way. So I found it, if you t I take it off a half and then I, this is my other, I fold it back I have a nice line I can see. And so then I just go along my, start at one end, and just lay that along that edge. So it's nice and flat, no ripples. I don't have anything sticking in my way. When you do run it through the Xyron, you, you have to pull the whole thing off your sticker. Um, it is important if you're gonna use the Xyron to fold, score and fold your plain paper before you stick it in the Xyron. Because like I said, when you pull it off of that, it's gonna be sticky backed. It, then it's kind of too late to do your score and fold because it's sticky. So if you've done that before, you'll already see your line. And even though it's sticky, um, they actually come with two different cartridges. One is permanent and one is repositionable. When I started this project, I happened to have the repositionable one in my Xyron, and that's just a little less tacky. I ended up having to switch halfway through to the permanent, and that worked too. I almost think the repositionable one that I liked better. And when I say repositionable, it's just a little less tacky. It still sticks, and it's not going to come up. You know, it, it's not like you can peel it off a book page. Okay, so now I have taken the other side off. I have my nice fold. And then that way, I can just take this paper and line it up with that top line and the edge. Oops, let's see how brittle that paper is. That's why I like to use it for demo things. And you can just see as you go. And nice and flat. So, so to me, that was just much more nice, flat, easier to work with, um, to do a whole tape like that. And I know I'm not the first person to do a taped hinge, but I'm just showing you with how I resolved my, my other, you know, mistake. So now I had this and then the next page, I would put my next tape again and then my next page and just keep going. So that was much easier to do. I liked how it turned out in the end much better. Um, so all of my things, instead of being hinged from the back side, which you could do that too, okay? Um, if you didn't want this tape showing, you could have hinged it from the back side, and then what you would see instead of this, you know, um, 
This is to me kind of what a book binding looks like if they were all stitched in, it's all kind of book page color. Instead of having this, you would have had all those different tape colors, or you know, maybe you were using white tape, or you were using, um, maybe you had printed music sheet or something onto your sticker paper. You would see that other whatever pattern on there. And that might've been, you know, kind of neat too. Um, but I was doing a step at a time, not even knowing how I'm gonna put this in the book. So, and I liked the idea of, um, because Rachel's papers were so colorful, and these collages, I'm going to, I'll go through and show them all to you. But because they were so, you know, colorful, I liked, you know, and some of my pages were the backside of a tea stain paper and wallpaper. So I liked just being able to add in that. It just kind of added to the collage. So now as I do things on these pages, it kind of gives me a starting point. That one I did plain. That one, I was running short. And so that one actually is just a piece of my coffee stained paper. But I just kind of alternated. This was actually some that I printed, um, some music page. Again, this was the cover, and then this was just one of the, the sheets. So I just kind of went through with all my little strips and just looked at them, you know, on the two pages they were going to be on and just kind of tried to make them be something that I would like to have as part of my spread when I get to that point. And I just really liked, I've been watching... Um, more of Rachel's videos. She's doing a 100-day project, which I haven't watched all of them, um, not even close. But I'm doing her slow stitching thing. And um, so I had, you know, so I subscribed to her channel. And she does a lot of different things. And she is someone that I just really admire because she just, I don't think she even edits her videos. I think she, she just sits down for a half hour or whatever and just does what she does. And I just, I love that because it's, she doesn't always have a plan. Everything's kind of mis, mismatchy um, and it always looks so good. And I just love her, her freedom, you know, of the way she does. So, and she's much more talented um, at uh, doing these collages and things. I don't know. She must have a, a background in, you know, um, graphic design or something, but I know I don't. So I just love her stuff. I love her style. So it was kind of fun to do this old book with her papers that I had already printed out. And I know I'll be using them again. In fact, I want to go get that, the other, the other volume of that one. So those were all my papers. I had them all picked out, you know, um, just because I wanted to kind of alternate what I was using. And then this is what I ended up with. It's a little bit tacky, not bad, just because, you know, it's each one of these is a stick has a sticky back that's in been folded in there so it, it's it's drier than it was yesterday and I, I think it's going to be fine I'm I was half tempted just to leave it so you see all this I did take um my vintage photo or one of whatever dauber I had around and I did dirty it up even more just because I really like that and then it did also kind of dulls down that that glueiness too so I was kind of like things dirty and grungy. So then my next dilemma was how the heck am I going to put this in here? And I really like how I, it looks, you know, to see the spine. And I wasn't sure if I even wanted to cover up, you know, what was on here. Somebody had, I mean, these are old, this is an old stamp. I didn't do any of this. It's, you know, has some writing on it. Um, on here. They're just like concentric circles. Someone was playing around and another another little stamp. So I kind of don't want to even cover that up. So I had I was playing around yesterday with kind of ideas of what to use. And I've been also cleaning out fabrics. Like I said, I keep every day I try to to aim myself somewhere in my room and say, what do I need to do? So this is a fabric I just love. And I may share some of it. We'll see. But I thought it would be a beautiful book cover. So I kind of thought I can either, I don't really want to cover up the title. But, you know, if I was doing it on this one, maybe I would have just glued that on there. And then you still see the edge around. And I could put some trim and, you know, do some more things to it. But I just love this fabric. Um, the color and everything. And the, just the way it kind of has that wallpapery look. I thought it looked really good with the book. So I kind of thought about, I cut this piece thinking maybe I'll, maybe I'll do something like that or maybe I'll do it on the inside. Um, 
like this where I, I glue it to the spine and then these little wings get glued to the inside of the book. Kind of like that. So I thought about that as one idea. And the one thing I didn't like about that is, I mean, it's pretty on the, this side too. I could glue that down and not leave, you know, don't cover this up and just leave it like that. You know, just so it's kind of, you see it deconstructed. I thought if I go and put, a, normally what you would do is in like a proper book binding, I guess, is there would be this other sheet that would go, it would be double sized. So it would cover this and it would get glued to the back of this one. And that kind of also keeps it all together. Kind of like if that was the thing and it would hide that. I could do that too, but this fabric is so thick, I kind of feel it in there. I'm afraid when I glue it, you'll see it. And then I didn't really like that either. So I kind of was taking my taking my mind off of that idea. Plus, I don't know, you know, I still kind of liked seeing, I mean, that looks good too, but I kind of like seeing these pages. So then I thought, well, if I cut this fabric into like tab sizes, and I have a couple here somewhere. My desk is cleaner, but I'm still seem to put things aside. I had cut a couple of pieces of this somewhere anyway. So I thought I could do that and then just do like this, like hinges to the cover like that. But then I still had the dilemma how, you know, how, how are these going to stick in? I need that paper inside or I need to glue this to the spine, you know, so I was kind of playing around with that, which would be another idea. But I think I've come up with one that I like even more. So then I thought, okay, I'm still not thrilled with that. I still want to see more of this, I think. So then I went and I grabbed a piece of my, uh, this is just some of my rusted fabric. Um, it has some rust on it. That darker gray color that you see is taking tea while it's out in the sun drying and adding that to it. And I, I cut it in half, so I'm not sure which piece I want to use. Let's see. I just like it. I like the torn edges just because it kind of has the same rattiness that the book does. So my idea was to not cover the whole spine, just cover a par part of it. That way I can glue that down to the spine. And then I have these flaps still here I can glue down to this. And see how if that's enough. I, it may not be enough to hold it all in. It's probably not going to be. I'm probably still going to need to do a, a paper here and cover this. Um, but maybe I only cover, maybe I only do it, you know, part way. I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to do this on camera and see how it goes. But I kind of like that because it still looks really grungy. I still see my spine. I had thought about embroidering something just on this because... Um, I'm doing all the slow stitching now too. I really kind of like how it's not glued to that. It's kind of loose, but I don't, I think I have to do that in order to get it to all attach. You know what I mean? Normally you could sew that in, you know, I could go to a couple of places or one place down the center, but I, I just don't think it's, I don't know. I don't know that that would be enough. So I think I'm just gonna have to maybe go for it. Okay, so it's, do I want this one or do I want this one? This one's a little lighter, less spots, which it's gonna partially get covered anyway because I have another idea. That one has a little rust showing too. I don't know. I think this was my first choice. So I think I'll just go with it. Okay, so here's my idea. I was gonna put that there, which I really like. We'll figure the inside out later. But then I thought I wanna use some of these scraps because I really like that. And I think it came off of this book. So I could attach, I could even sew it with my machine. I needed a little narrower, so I'll have to trim a little bit of that 
And then I thought of, you know, to layer. Maybe I don't have that part. But before I cut it to decide, because I thought I had this part of the spine and I could use it the direction, you know, this way. But I kind of like seeing this side. So then it's, do I use the whole thing or part of it, stagger it? So I'm kind of thinking to use part of it. If I took this, oops, I guess I don't. If I took this part this way, oh no, this way, and used this little piece like that, that's almost like too much. I guess I should just take that off. Yeah, I kind of like that. Do I want this piece? Or, this piece has a little bit of blue on it. That would be not, not too much. Okay. So I think I'm going to go for it. Okay. So I think I need this to be a little bit narrower, but I don't know. Oh, and maybe shorter too. Let's see. Then I see more of my fabric. So I'm going to take this little bit off. And then I need it to be a tiny bit narrower. I like these straggly pieces, so. Did I mention it snowed here? I can't remember if I said anything at the beginning of this or not. We just had snow and we may have some more little storms coming in and out, so I just love it when it's all windy. I didn't get to be here for every storm this winter, so it's nice. I know it's funny, some people don't like it when it snows because they have to get out on it, in it, but usually you get a warning before you're gonna have snow, so you can stock up and not plan, you know, plan to not leave the house. Okay, I think that's nice. Okay, so I need to kind of find the center and at least put a little bit of glue because I want to, I think, sew, sew them down with my machine too, a little bit. So I think I'll just use this. This is what takes me so long. I have such a hard time deciding. When I watch Rachel's videos, she just, I don't know, she's just very decisive. Maybe once you've been doing it a while, or that's just my personality, I need to let go and just kind of let, let it be what it wants to be. I think I might want to even, oops. Dirty that up a little bit, but you gotta be careful. It's very fragile. That's why I think the sewing on my machine a little bit will help kind of keep it all together too. Okay, I'm gonna hold that there for a second because it's it's rounded from being attached to a book for hundreds of years. Let's see. Yeah, I like that. I think that's going to be very good. Okay, I'm going to go stitch this real quick. Okay, so now I have my, my grungy patch. There, it's from part of the spine of the actual book. And then I think what I need to do is glue that down. I really would like to get some more dirt on this though.
if this will work. Fingers crossed. But I like that I see my book pages. That makes me makes me happy. Okay, so I'm gonna use some glue on. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry really well before I move on to the next little part here. Okay, so I'm back. I wanted to let this dry. It's not completely dry. And after I turned the camera off, I decided it was kind of taking a little bit of time and I was kind of trying to peek and see and it's, see it's still not totally dry. But um, I decided I should, this, you know, is art glitter glue and it may work fine, but I had this and I forgot I should have just used this to begin with. This is quick glue. It's from when I was making lampshades and it, it, um, it puts together dissimilar materials and it's just non-toxic water-based odorless. Anyway, it's, it's quicker and it's just uh, maybe a better thing to use. I'm sure there's a book binding glue that I should just get. Um, I should, I know I watch book Nick the booksmith once in a while and um, I'm sure she has something she likes, but maybe I should try that. So I think I need to order. If I'm gonna be doing this kind of thing, I need to order some uh, glue that dries fast and is, you know, the right sturdy and all that. So I think I'm gonna go ahead though, and even though this is not quite, it's close, go ahead and put these flaps down and then let that dry and see where I'm at. I also, while I was letting that dry, I kind of dug through my little book plate. I hadn't, hadn't thought of this. These aren't book plates. These are actually a label holder. You know, label can go in the top. But I have a bunch of them because I took them off a piece of furniture and put the pool kind. So I have a bunch of these. So I thought I could just, that might be really cute to glue that on there too. So I'll do that after. But anyway, so I think I'm going to go ahead just to get this moving along. Not Try not to get my head in the frame here. Someone I, I was watching, probably Rachel, had a spreader for their glue instead of using their finger. And I thought that was, I don't know what it was she was using, but. Yeah, see, I, I can feel that already drying. That's nice and quick. I am probably going to have to do that other piece of paper. I know there's a name for it. Somebody's told me before, but I don't remember to put here so that it will all stay together. But we'll see once it dries. I have to give it, I need to be patient and I'm, I am not patient. Okay. And I think they usually suggest putting something in between here. We will find out when I start working on this if this holds. <laughs> I think maybe I put the glue on here, but then I need like waxy paper. Let's try this. Again, the good thing about doing grungy things 
they're more forgiving when they're not perfect. I need to let that dry really, really well. And I may have to add glue in there. Okay, now I think what I will do is put, I have another one of these somewhere. These are just the craft mats and I've cut I have a couple, so I cut them up. In fact, I can cut this one smaller um, because I can just clean them off. You know how I'm bad about putting something when I'm gluing on my on my mat. So that was my solution. So clamps, if I was at my workshop, I would have clamps. I could just clamp this. I have these. These are decorative ones. I just robbed them off of a display thing, but I think they'll work. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry and we will see how that worked. So I'm back and I've taken the clips off and I'm honestly loving how this worked. Having those clips on it uh, really squished the book, which made this very wrinkly, if you can see, and I absolutely love that because my whole thing was I really wanted to see all the different pages, you know, the different, and that just kind of, made it even grungier. So I'm, I don't want to fiddle with it too much because it's not completely dry, but I, you know me, I'm just impatient. So I don't know if this will fit on here or not when it's all dry. I'm going to wait before I try to glue it in. Uh, cause I think it's not quite, I think it's a little bit too wide. It's going to interfere with my pages or my covers. So it's fine. I think it's fine even without it, but I think I'm just going to love this. I'm hoping, hoping that it works where I don't need to put a paper here because I don't mind seeing all of this if it'll hold. So we'll see. Got a little glue there. Um, we'll see how that works. I don't want to open all these pages till tomorrow. I think I want to let it dry overnight. So I'm going to leave this one to dry. Um, and then I'll come back and maybe show you when I want to do some things on the inside. I, um, you know, I'm, I'm just kind of raving about Rachel lately. And um, just because I've been watching more of her videos, there's so many talented people out there. I know I'm not even a drop in the bucket of uh, finding people even. But I... I really like, she's been, I guess it's the 100 Day Project, and I, I really, like I said, I haven't watched too many of those, but um, she she makes a whole bunch because she has a certain style of this whole mishmash of stuff, I'm going to call it. I mean that as a compliment. She can make things ahead of time, and they all end up going together, you know, just the way that she, she works. I love that. If you've known me forever, I'm very eclectic in that way. Um, and patchworky and that kind of thing. So I, I'm kind of wanting to maybe do some mass making things because then what happens is when she goes to, you know, do decorate something up, it just seems so much quicker because she always has things already made up. And, um, you know, maybe then I can actually get a book finished in a shorter time if I do that. So I'm now that I've ordered uh, one of her digitals and I'm starting to shop for more in that kind of style, um, I just ordered a couple of things from Eva at Bohemian Crafty because I really love her stuff too. Just to kind of be able to like pull bits and pieces and then again, still make some on my own. I do have a lot of things to scan, some vintage ephemera and all kinds of things that will take time. But um, And then I'll, I'll maybe get to creating some of my own kits. But I am not as talented as they are at um, putting those collages together. Uh, I don't know how, you know, the blurring the edges and all that. I'm just trying to figure all that out. I'm, I'm just, I have no background in it and I'm just kind of winging it and learning as I go. So hopefully I'll, I'll someday, um, you know, be able to do something as nice looking as they do. So 
Um, that's my goal. I'm going to continue with my spring cleaning and work on projects here and there and share videos when I have something, uh, either a mistake to share or something new that I figured out, um, and I will share that with you. So have a great rest of your day. Now go make something. Bye.